Good morning, Mr. Bobby. Good morning, Mr. Good Nicole. morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Um, so, um, I, I've concluded that um, uh, white people and, and the most powerful white people and their um, most um, very and their um, various organizations, whether it's the um, CIA or the FBI or any so-called um, government agency, um, uh, I, I've been re- doing a lot of reading, um, particularly the book called um, Program to Kill. I, I bought um, the book um, Race Code War. Um, and, th- and those books um, really shared um, some constructive information on just what white people are doing and how they function. And um, do you think, Mr. Nelly Fuller, that um, if more non-white, particularly black people, understood that they that we are dealing with a um, uh, uh, an enemy that is a um, uh, a master pedophile, master rapist, and master mass murderer. Um, do you think that would encourage more people to want to counter racism, or would that cause more fear and hesitancy in wanting to counter racism and solve um, the problem? Well, I, 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 maybe I don't understand the question. Yeah, well, let me attempt to um, rephrase it. But um, if more non-white people knew what um, white people were, were doing, whether it's um, the mass murdering, the mass uh, mind control, the, the mass rape of children and um, so-called adults, if more non-white people were aware of white people's behaviors, do you think that would um, make them want to attempt to counter racism, or would that produce more um, fear and hesitancy and wanting to solve the problem? It would probably do both, but it's a necessity. I look at myself. Once I concluded that everything is being run that's worth anything is run by the white supremacists and that they are running in such a way that they are mistreating people by the millions based on color, which is what white supremacy is about, mistreating people based on color, dominating and mistreating people based on color in order to gain what? People do things for gains. So what do the white supremacists get out of dominating and mistreating people based on color? They get the things that all people want in one form or another. This is what all people want. Three things, fun, glory, and material comfort. And presumably, according to the evidence, some white people, people classified themselves as white, said that we're going to dominate the entire planet of non-white people based on the color of their skin, black, brown, red, yellow, tan. I mean, as long as they got color in their skin, they will be subject to some everyone that we will classify. They'll do the classifying as white. And what we'll get out of it, because we're not doing it just to be doing something, we're going to get what Everybody wants in one form or another, and that is lots of fun, lots of glory, meaning being well thought of, looked up to, worship maybe, and we'll get material comfort, a whole lot of nice things out of having them do what we want them to do when we want them to do it, having them work. We'll have what we call, you know, the system itself will be basically the most successful system that you can have where you put forth the least effort, and that is a thing called slavery. We'll call it by different names. Some people will call it capitalism. Some people will call it communism. Some people will call it this type of ism, that type of ism. But it'll basically be racism. It's a form of slavery. That's all racism is. And we get fun, glory, and profit. So in answer to your question, once we see what what the white supremacists are doing and how that system works, it will make 
us afraid initially. I'm full of fear, all right? But at the same time, I'm saying I'm born in a prison called the system of white supremacy. So what do I do in a prison? I do what every prisoner does. If I'm trying to make sense to myself, trying to get some type of sanity, and that is try not to be a prisoner. So every prisoner, every person who is locked up in any kind of system unjustly should be thinking about the main thing they should be thinking about. I'm in this prison. I shouldn't be here. There's no reason for me to be here. I should be somewhere doing something else other than being a prisoner. So I'm going to try to either get out of this prison or eliminate the prison. So counter-racist codification is about eliminating the prison because the prison never should have existed in the first place. And when you eliminate it, eliminate it for what reason? To replace it. Replace it with what? With something that's not a prison system. And the system of white supremacy needs to be replaced. Replaced with what? A system of justice, logically speaking. So, yes, you'll have fears. You're supposed to have fears. The system of white supremacy is something that's scary. So you'll be afraid. But fear is made to be conquered. By what? What are you what what brings about fear? Not knowing what to do. So how do you eliminate not knowing what to do? Finding out what to do. That's logical. You don't fear fire when you know what to do about fire. You don't fear water if you fall in it and you know how to swim. But the person that falls in water and don't know how to swim, you better believe fear grips them immediately. Immediately. (laughs) They fell in the water, so they want somebody who knows how to swim. The person that knows how to swim does not fear the water, even though they should have regard for the water because Mm -hmm. water acts different ways at different times. And here with this summer coming up, somebody's going to get drowned because they're not going to know what a riptide is. It's going to happen. The person's not going to have any fear, but that fear is going to grip them when they find themselves caught in that riptide if they never Mm -hmm. found out what a riptide is. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you, well, let's go to Long Beach, and we have- 